Hello everyone. In this video I want to talk to you about sex in a very open and transparent way. I'm sure that if you stick around until the end, many doubts will be clarified, and I want to discuss it in a simple and easy to understand manner. Brothers and sisters, I'm impressed by how people have blockages in this area, and it greatly affects marriages. Once, a pastor told me that a brother from his church called him desperately asking for a deliverance prayer for his wife because he claimed that his wife had a demon in her body, specifically the demon of Pambagira, a spirit associated with sensuality in some belief systems. The pastor investigated and found out that the man's wife appeared in front of him in a very sensual way, wearing lingerie. Brothers and sisters, when the pastor told me that, I started laughing, but at the same time, I saw how serious it is, and how religious beliefs hinder people from receiving God's blessings. There are many men and women who act legalistic, saying, don't touch me. But when they are alone, they are addicted to pornography, not to mention those who cheat on their spouses. Let's be honest here. Many people spend all their time thinking about sex, and it's not a coincidence. This topic is everywhere, in movies, series, on the internet, especially, or when you gather with friends, and people always talk about it. In the Christian community, it's no different, but we have a different conduct, especially concerning sex outside of marriage. I remember when I started attending church in the year 2002 when I converted. They taught from the Bible that sex before marriage is a sin, and thanks to these teachings, I made the decision to wait until marriage. I got married as a virgin at the age of 29, and today, I thank the Lord for that decision. My wife also got married as a virgin. However, I know that the majority cannot wait until marriage, and that doesn't invalidate God's word. If you obey the Lord, you will surely reap the rewards. Even if you commit sins and repent, the Lord's promise is that the blood of Jesus purifies you from all sin, amen? So when people get married, many think that now everything is allowed, they can do whatever they want. I'm going to show you in the Word of God that there are at least four types of prohibited sex, okay? But before we begin, I want to ask you to subscribe to my channel. Just click on the button below the video, subscribe, and next to it you'll see a bell icon. Click on that bell to receive all notifications whenever I post a new video. Brothers and sisters, before anything else, I need to make something very clear. It is not a sin to feel pleasure and experience orgasm with your spouse, okay? I say this because many churches treat this subject as taboo, preaching in a way that gives the impression that the person is doing something wrong. As a result, couples may feel dirty even though they are under God's blessing. One of the main reasons for this is that people often wonder, what would Jesus do in my place? As Jesus did not marry, and of course did not engage in sexual relations, some people believe that sex is carnal and impure. They think, if Jesus did not involve himself in this area, it must be a sin or not important. But brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. We cannot always base our lives on what Jesus would do, because there are many things Jesus wouldn't do. For example, Jesus did not have sexual relations, not because it was something negative that would distance him from the Father, but because he saw sex as the fruit of marriage. He did not marry because his sole mission was to die on the cross for sinners. Therefore, we should base our lives on what Jesus did and taught. Amen? Jesus was not a sinner like us. He was not saved by faith as we were, and he is not separated from God as we were because of sin. In other words, Jesus is in a different category. Therefore, we must focus on what Jesus taught, and what does his word teach us about sex within marriage. In the first book of the Bible, the book of Genesis, we see that God created man and woman as sexual beings, and this is not a sin. He created our bodies with genital organs for sexual relations and reproduction. When a man and a woman come together in a relationship, they complement each other and become one flesh. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 7, the Apostle Paul talks extensively about marriage and sexuality. For example, he advises that a married man should not only dedicate himself to the work of God, but also take care of worldly matters to please his wife. He also counsels that husbands and wives should not abstain from sexual relations for too long, except during a period of fasting. But even then, the pause in sex should not last too long, as Satan can take advantage of it to tempt the couple and lead them into temptation. Brothers and sisters, we need to understand that the lack of sex can lead to abstinence, meaning the body begins to crave it. And when this happens, 
a person becomes more vulnerable to acting according to their carnal instincts. I am not saying that one should act on these instincts, but it is something that can happen, and the devil knows it well. This explains why many people make wrong decisions when acting on impulse and later deeply regret it. Therefore, before discussing the four types of prohibited sex in marriage, I want to reflect with you on adultery. I believe we have all heard the phrase, love does not betray, right? This expression is very romantic, but when you face the routine and problems of a relationship, you realize that in real life, things are quite different. I am saying this, brothers and sisters, because unfortunately, the number of adultery cases has increased dramatically, even within the churches, causing much suffering and destruction to families. So let's reflect on the sin of betrayal. First, we need to understand that humans, no matter how well-intentioned, are sinners full of flaws. That's why Jesus gave us a warning in Matthew chapter 26. Let's see what he said. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Brothers and sisters, we are constantly tempted by the offers of this world, and we need to be vigilant all the time to resist these temptations. That's why even the love between a man and a woman alone is not enough to prevent betrayal. There is a great illusion that deceives many husbands and wives. They believe that those who love their spouse will never feel attracted to someone else. However, as I just mentioned, humans are flawed, and the Word of God itself states that our flesh is weak. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we need to be watchful, because the truth is that what the eyes desire, the imagination can wander. And if a person does not cut off these thoughts, they may eventually fall into temptation. Let's see what is written in James chapter 1. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. Then, after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. Look at this, brothers and sisters. While we are in this carnal body, we may feel attracted to someone of the opposite sex. We can be captivated by a smile, a beautiful body, a voice, a gaze, a personality. And if our carnal weakness weren't enough, we are bombarded by media and culture that promote infidelity, extramarital sex, objectification of women, the image of a womanizer, a smooth talker, and so on. Combine all of this with a bit of pornography, marital neglect, and then we start to understand why many people cheat, even while loving their partner. And I want to read another verse for you from 1 Peter chapter 5. Look at what it says. Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Look at this, brothers and sisters. Satan is always alert, ready to catch those who do not seek God and only crave the pleasures the world offers. I shared all these things with you because we need to let go of any illusions and face reality. Embrace the truth. Amen. Therefore, whether you are a husband or a wife, know that you are human and thus inclined to do what is wrong. Your flesh desires what is forbidden. And if you don't close the doors to sin, you can indeed fall into temptation and betray your spouse. But does that mean everyone is condemned to betray? By no means, brothers and sisters. This is where we must learn a crucial lesson. Those who love God and their spouse avoid the appearance of evil and don't rely on their own strength. So my brother, if you are being tempted, be very careful and never think you are strong enough. The Bible says, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. The advice I give you is not to try to face temptation, but to flee from it, okay? Also try to communicate more with your partner, solve problems instead of avoiding them, and above all, have the fear of God. I know many people think fearing God means being afraid of Him, but it's not like that. Having fear in your heart is having reverence and respect for the Lord, understanding that God does not approve of sin and disciplines disobedient children. So, if you follow these pieces of advice, betrayal will never be a part of your life, okay? There's a verse in Proverbs 28 that goes like this, Lest is the one who always trembles before God, but whoever hardens their heart falls into trouble. So if we want to have a blessed life, a life of peace, protection and tranquility, all we need is to have the fear of the Lord and obey His word. Now I will talk to you about the four types of sex prohibited by the Bible. The first of them is swinging. I know it may seem strange to talk about this, but this practice is more common than we imagine, brothers and sisters. It works like this. 
Couples gather in a place and have sexual relations with each other's spouses. Can you imagine that? Those who engage in this kind of thing claim that it is good for the relationship because it increases trust and freedom between spouses. However, this is nothing more than adultery, and we know that adultery is one of the sins that causes the most destruction and displeases God. In Leviticus chapter 18, it is written as follows, Do not have sexual relations with your neighbor's wife and defile yourself with her. And furthermore, brothers and sisters, this sin causes deep wounds in the soul and eventually destroys trust and respect in the marriage. So flee from this sin, okay? The second prohibited sexual act, according to the Bible, is threesome. Threesome is when a couple engages in sexual relations with a third person with the consent of both. Some people try to justify their desire for threesome by pointing out that Jacob was married to two sisters, Leah and Rachel. However, the Bible never states that he slept with both women at the same time. We see that polygamy, the practice of marrying multiple women, was allowed during the time of the nation of Israel. But it was never God's perfect will. God never approved of polygamy. And in the New Testament, we see that a man should be the husband of one wife, as even Jesus spoke about it. Look at what he said in Matthew chapter 19. Haven't you read, he replied, that at the beginning the Creator made them male and female and said, For this reason a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore what God has joined together, let no one separate. See, brothers and sisters, Jesus spoke of a man and a woman in marriage. That is God's will meaning there is no room for another person in a heterosexual marriage, okay? The third type of sex that God prohibits in His Word is abuse. We grow up with the idea that abuse only occurs when a criminal uses physical force to have relations with another person without their consent, but that's not true. There is also abuse within marriage, which happens when one spouse forces the other to have sex without their consent. Those who commit this sin often misuse the passage from 1 Corinthians chapter 7 to justify their wrongdoing. Look at what is written. The wife does not have authority over her own body but yields it to her husband. In the same way, the husband does not have authority over his own body but yields it to his wife. So brothers and sisters, what happens? They take this verse out of context and many men believe that their wife's body belongs solely to them. Consequently, they think they can demand sex and have every right to force them to do something they don't want to. But what the Bible is saying is that we should satisfy our spouse and not just seek our own pleasure, okay? The fourth type of sex that God prohibits is pornography. Although not a sexual act in itself, these other prohibited types of sex are often stimulated by pornography. Many Christian couples claim to watch pornographic films before and during sexual activity to spice up their relationship. However, as much as both enjoy it, pornography can be very dangerous because when a person watches a film or any other type of pornographic material, they may be opening doors for the enemy to destroy the relationship. The Bible says that we must maintain purity in marriage. Look at what the Bible says. Marriage should be honored by all, and the marriage bed kept pure, for God will judge the adulterer and all the sexually immoral. And you might be wondering about oral sex and the use of sexual toys, right? Well, brothers and sisters, even though the Bible doesn't provide a definitive answer, you need to consider whether both of you are in agreement. If you don't feel comfortable doing something, then it's right not to do it. The most important thing is to honor God and respect your spouse. Then, you should analyze whether it will be beneficial for both of you, whether it will bring you closer or push you apart, okay? Of course, the Bible doesn't cover every specific topic, as it would be too much to fit into one book. When something is not clearly prohibited by God, you can judge what is allowed. See what the Bible says in 1 John chapter 3. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God and receive from Him anything we ask, because we keep His commands and do what pleases Him. Okay, but regarding anal sex, for example, brothers, this is something our bodies were not made for, and even doctors warn about the various complications and diseases it can cause, okay? So as you heard in this message, sex within marriage is by no means a sin. It is not dirty or wrong for you to experience pleasure. 
Additionally, sex is not solely for reproduction, okay? It was created by God to give us pleasure. If you want to be truly blessed, stay away from any form of promiscuity, from things that truly displease God. Choose to live a relationship with respect and love, where both parties agree. Certainly you will be very happy, becoming increasingly close and intimate with each other, bringing blessings to all of you, amen? If you liked this message, I now ask that you share it on WhatsApp, send it to your friends and fellow believers. Let's spread the word of God because it brings light and peace to our hearts. Glory to God. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. May God bless you.